Well, are you ready to give in? You may have heard that if you've been part of wrestling. Well, I, as a child, would wrestle with my sister, with my brother, with the neighbor kids. I don't know what it was, but we were all about wrestling when we were little kids. Wrestling and turning everyone around and playing out in the dirt and the mud and the grass and making a mess. But the ultimate was, are you ready to give in? Because the one who was supposed to be the strongest was always trying to pin down the weakest and ask for that surrender completely. Are you ready to give in? And so many times the wrestling would just go on because no, 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 I'm not ready to give in. We're going to continue wrestling and wrestling and wrestling. And on it would go that it would be a playful fight and struggle. Well, in our world today, we have a lot of people who are wrestling, struggling. They're not ready to give in or to surrender, but simply saying, I feel it's really important and valuable for me to go through life and to struggle. Somehow we've embraced this kind of thought. We think struggling is appropriate. We think wrestling with issues and wrestling with God and wrestling in prayer and all these kind of things is so apropos for our spiritual journey. Well, people say, well, pastor, what about the story of Jacob and how he wrestled with the Lord? Isn't that a calling for you and I to do the same, that we should be wrestling? Well, let me tell you this. The story is not about God withholding anything, but it's a story about Jacob wrestling with his strong desire for change and blessing in his own life. And he truly wrestled with his own issue. He wrestled with his own consciousness. He wrestled with his own guilt. He wrestled with all these things needlessly. Because in the end, he realized all I need to do is to just allow the divine to be at work within my life. All things began to work together for good. How powerful that is that we begin to embrace this very thought because too much of our world is a wrestling match when it comes to our spirituality. I need to wrestle with God. I need to wrestle with this prayer request. I need to wrestle with this issue. I need to just hold out and just be as strong and determined and fight for this as if God were withholding something, as if there was something that we needed to do to get God to answer a prayer or whatever it may be. How many of you heard the phrase prayer warrior? Oh, come on, prayer warriors. Let's all get to worry. Let's go to prayer. Let's go to war in prayer. But let me tell you this. This kind of thinking of being calling ourselves a warrior would suggest that there's some sort of battle, as if there is a battle with the one power that is God. There is only one power in this world. All else is the absence of that power. There is light in the world, but light, when it's absence, unfolds darkness. There is no darkness when there's light. Well, when we turn the lights on, where did darkness go? It just didn't exist. It only exists in the absence of light. An adversary only exists in the absence of the divine presence and an awareness of God. So is there a war? Do we need to go to war in prayer? Do we need to be prayer warriors that are struggling and fighting as if there was some sort of battle? But let me tell you this, you need not create a battle because it's not necessary to have a battle because there is no battle. God is the victor. So, but somehow we've got the idea, we need to struggle, we need to wrestle, we need to fight, we need to be prayer warriors. Or how about prayer wrestlers? That's true too. Wrestling with God to get God's blessing as if, We're not going to just, we're going to beat our chest. We're going to pray all night. We're going to have prayer meetings that stomp, 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 and we're going to beseech and beseech, and we're going to cry out, and we're going to cry, and we're going to scream, and we're going to holler, and maybe shake a tambourine, whatever it may be. We're going to do something to get a hold of God because God must be slumbering and sleeping because we're prayer wrestlers, and we're wrestling with this as if there is some sort of thing, again, that we may feel in some consciousness or thought that God would withhold anything anything. You see, when we begin to embrace that, we have totally missed an understanding of who and what God is. God is love. And that love never withholds. That love never ends. That love never stops. That love endures and never forsakes. It is always there. So when we understand that love, that love is generous and kind, ever providing, and is a source of the goodness that we so desire within our lives, So is there a need to wrestle? Oh, no. Not a need to wrestle at all, but to acknowledge that divine presence 
So we don't need to be a prayer warrior or a prayer wrestler or anyway. How about a prayer struggler? Mm. You know, where we're saying there's a belief that life is just meant to be hard. And so in this struggle, we need to do some forcing. Let's force this to happen. You know, I'm going to believe there's some prosperity happening in my life, but I'm going to force it. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to be just doing all I can within my efforts and, and my humanness. I'm going to force something to unfold for my life. And then we realize in God, there's no need to force. There's no need to try to uh, manipulate or to exercise. Because in God, the generosity is there and it is flowing in a divine flow in our life at all times. So we're not a warrior. We're not a prayer wrestler. We're not a prayer struggler. We're not a wrestler or struggler in any shape or form as we walk in the awareness of this divine presence in our lives. Now, some people think, well, this is the best way to learn. You need to struggle, and you'll learn more. The more you struggle in life, the more you'll appreciate what you've got. So we need to have a few hardships in, in the journey of our life. Ah, but let me tell you this. Jesus said, I can come that you might have life abundantly. Jesus didn't say, I came so that you might struggle or that you might have a difficult life or that you may face lots of challenges or that you may think you need to force or wrestle, or that you may need to manipulate, or that in any way you may feel that something is being withheld from you. You see, that's the beauty of the walk with God. When we've acknowledged this divine presence in its fullness, in its completeness, what we find is that there is the best way to learn is to learn through the wonderful experience of allowing, not wrestling, allowing. Allow the goodness of God to flow through you. Allow the goodness to appear. You know, because so many of us, what happens is we don't realize that there's goodness all around us. There's abundance. It's always been there. It's always been available to us. But we're the ones who create the limitations in our mind and in our thought. We're the ones who say, you know, I think God might be limiting, or I think this, or I doubt that, or I question this. And you see, it is us who are the barriers to this divine flow and this goodness and this abundance that it is there for us. Oh, some may say, well, you need to suffer to find answers. That somewhere along the line, there's this belief that's been instilled in our thinking that uh, it may become an excuse for many of us then that we need to suffer to find the answers. We need to do this. We need to struggle. We need to fight. We need to, oh, on goes the list. And this may be what's holding us back from an overcoming mentality and understanding that we're called to be overcomers is that we think it's a struggle. Yet Scripture says, struggle and you shall find? Oh, no, no, that's not right. Uh, wrestle and you shall find? No, oh, that's not right either. Oh, it's seek and you shall find. Open your heart and allowing this to happen. And the answers are there. There is no struggle. There is no fight. There is no force. It is simply seeking and allowing this divine presence to unfold within our lives. Because what we don't often understand is that it's our right to receive. It's our right to receive through what we call grace. This grace of God that is there. It is unmerited favor. You did not have to earn a single thing. You don't have to win a wrestling award. You don't have to fight for anything. You don't have to force things through. For the grace of God is there. And that grace never ends. You don't have to earn it. It is there. It is uh, freely given. It is struggle Three in our law. Philippians chapter 4, from our New Testament, in verse 19, it says, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. According, according, in a line with his riches, infinite riches, infinite. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the scripture says. God dresses the lilies of the field. God, to all these wonderful things, God cares for the sparrows. These are wonderful metaphors and simple illustrations of the infinite riches of God. That's right. God's going to meet your needs, not through a struggle, not through a wrestle, not through a force, but just through the infinite blessing, the infinite riches that are God. It's not according to our level that God meets our need, our level of struggle, our level or degree of fight or wrestling. It's according to... God's riches, which are abundant and ever available within our lives. That scripture goes on to say that we will experience this in so beautiful 
according to uh, his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. In glory, meaning that glory is the blending of, and the merging of God's mind in ours. How are we going to experience all this goodness? It's only when we merge God's mind and our mind. The thoughts of God become our thoughts. Our thoughts become the thoughts that God would express. And so when we merge, when we come together, we are, that, that is the glory. That is the glory. You're in this wonderful place of goodness, and the glory of God is seen and revealed and experienced in that moment when you begin to think all of God, all of the divine is at work in me and flowing through me right now. 2 Corinthians verse nine and, uh, chapter 9 and verse 8 says, And God is able, able to bless, to bless you abundantly, so that in all things and at all times, in all things and in all times, did I say that? In all things and in all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. God is able. I want to tell you this. So often in our spiritual journeys, we want to diminish the ability of God. We want to diminish that. We say, you know, well, God's probably too busy to understand. Or the reason God's not answering the prayer is that, you know what, there's something wrong here. And we begin to diminish, in some ways, the wonderful, infinite power and presence of this divine that is ever ready, ever ready to meet that need at all times and in all things. And this is the key thing that every moment of your life, this is where the abundance is ready to flow. So is there a need to wrestle? Is there a need to struggle? Is there a need to fight? Is there a need to force? Because in all things and in all times, it says you will have what you need. So here again is this awareness that makes a big shift in our life. I can breathe. I can rest. All is well. I can rest. I am safe. For I need not wrestle or fight for this. I just know I've got a feeling, I am receiving, I am believing that all is well, and I'm at perfect peace in this experience. When we walk in that, that's where the unfolding of the goodness of God is there for us. I want to tell you this, this may often be this struggle consciousness, may be why so many people are not moving forward in what they would like to receive in their life. We find the story of the children of Israel. They wandered through the wilderness, headed towards a promised land, a land that was promised, I love this, promised to them. It wasn't called the maybe land or the kind of not so, or, you know, if you get there, we'll see land. Uh, it was the promised land, right? That's what it was, you know? And so when we understand that kind of concept, we're like, wow, it's already promised to you? And now you come to the edge after this wilderness wandering, and you see, if we cross the river, the promised land is there for us, and they send out these spies to check it out, but the spies come back with stories of bounty and blessing and goodness, but, ooh, there may be some giants. There may be some challenges. And what do they do? They step away from God's ability and awareness of God's ability that God is making a way when there seems to be no way. And what do they choose? They choose, I'd rather wrestle. I'd rather struggle. I'd rather force. I'd rather go the hard way. Let me wander another 40 years in the wilderness. And too often that describes you and I. We're on the cusp, on the edge of what's promised to you. You're right there. And then there's this moments where you may doubt the ability of the divine to carry you through. And you may begin to question and wonder in your thought life, well, is this even possible? Will this really work for the challenges may be so great? And I forget that the scripture said in all things and in all times, ooh, and this is the all things and the all times moment. You see, that's when we begin to embrace this understanding. What happens is they, brought into, they bought into the struggle versus God making a way. And so often we think the easier way, rather than to simply trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding, as it says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We think the easier way is let's just give in to the struggle. Let's just take the hard way. Let's just wander another 40 years in the wilderness. I know it's promised, but you know there's challenges. Let me just take the easy way, which we think it's the easy way. And when we do that, we simply deny the presence and power and the, of the Almighty. We simply deny the opportunity for spiritual law to be at work within our lives. 
they forget that it was God who brought them there and provided for them and offered this promise. And how about us? Do we forget? God has brought you to this wonderful moment. God has brought you to this moment of great promise, this moment of great possibility. Have you forgotten? Let's hope not. Let's not give in for the wrestle or or give in to the struggle because what happens is, uh, you know, this whole intention of when you came into this life, your entrance uh, into this life was never meant to be a struggle. But now, uh, to clarify, I will have to say, making an entrance from the room may not always, boom, may not always be a piece of cake. Uh, that may have been a little struggle. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, as you've come into this world, it was not the intention. Day one, begin the struggle. Day one, begin the fight. Day one, begin the wrestle. Day one, that is not it at all. The psalmist wrote in chapter 16, verse 11, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are the pleasures forevermore. The path of your blessing to your success is there to be revealed beautifully, simply, as you seek and you allow, as you rest, as you know, as you say, I've got a feeling, everything, everything, everything will be all right. I've got that feeling. You see, what we do when we ignite that kind of feeling, we start to work spiritual law. We start to live in the very promises of God. I don't know about you, but I grew up and nobody really talked to me about, you know, how to apply promises, how to work promises, that promises of God. Oh, we heard that. That's sweet. That's nice. God says these nice little lovely things, but we didn't realize that those promises are law, law, law. I'm telling they're real. They're genuine. They're not some likely, like, yeah, well, I promise, but not so kind of thing that we may offer. Yes, I promise to love you forever, but, you know, as soon as you offend me, mm -mm, uh, you're out the door. Uh, You know, you know how we are in our human life when we come to our promises? We're not so good with promises, but God's promises are law. They're the same yesterday, today, and forever. They do not change. That's the beauty of it all, these wonderful promises Because when we understand that, we understand this is how God is working for our good and that there is no need for struggle, force, or to wrestle. When we understand this, we understand that we live by these wonderful spiritual laws. How about the simplicity of just understanding what you sow, you reap? Real basic one. Really, that should be square number one where we all begin. What are you sowing? Knowing that that's what you're going to reap when you understand that's a promise That's a promise that God will always fulfill. And in life, when you realize, wait a minute, what have I chosen to sow? Because too often we're not conscious of the seeds that we're sowing in our garden. Kind of like, you know, catching the little kids who say, you know, they're picking up that dandelion that has now just turned into a puffy white cluster of seeds and then blowing those seeds, those weeds, those weeds into your lawn into your garden. Did you mean to do that? Oh, it was so cute. I just thought, just blow the little, yeah, right. I just thought it was wonderful. I didn't really think about it. Did you think about the seeds you just planted? Did you think about the weeds? And now you wonder why your beautiful lawn is filled with all of those beautiful dandelion blossoms that turn into more weeds, that turn into more seeds. Oops, you didn't think about, wait a minute, what am I doing here with spiritual law? Well, what you're sowing, you're reaping. What you're doing, and too often in life, you have just sort of flippantly not paid attention to this law, promise, that's at work at all times, 24-7. So what seeds are you blowing into the winds of your garden? Be careful. Think twice. But when we intentionally sow seeds of beautiful flowers and gorgeous plants, or in a vegetable garden, we're sowing wonderful seeds of of uh, green beans and peas and cabbage and vegetables and all this kind of good stuff that we just love to reap in a harvest, we'll just know that that promise is at work for you. How about the law of attraction? That likes attract likes. That someone said to me, you know, Pastor, I don't know why so many people hate me. I said, well, honey, did you think about the hateful words you keep saying? You know, you realize, wait a minute, likes attract likes. You're putting out hate, and what do you get back? Hate back. 
You wonder, I can't understand why people don't respond to my Facebook posting and how wonderful it is. I said, well, did you think it was really wonderful with those words of hate and harm? You see, when we think about this, we realize, wait a minute, these are promises. These are laws. These, the law of attraction is out there. What you put out, you're going to attract right back to you. And there's also a law of repulsion, that things that are not like you, you will repel. And some people are wondering why the answer is not coming to me simply and easily. is because, well, you're wanting love, but you're putting out hate, and you're repelling that love. You're pushing it away. There is a repulsion. There's an energy that's going away that's, well, wait a minute. I, want to, I, I really want to live out my prosperity. I'm really excited about success and blessing. And you're really wanting that, but you're putting out a sense of failure. And you're putting out thoughts of uh, lack and insufficiency. And you're addressing your own insecurities. You wonder why. What happened to this prosperity? Where did it go? You see, people begin to, Almost there's a repulsion uh, to our success journey, you know? And sometimes this is this spiritual law is so much at work because quite often we may say, I want to achieve this goal, and when I achieve this goal, we, it's done. People have done this in sales to say, this month my sales are going to be $500. That's going to be really great. And when they achieve $500, that's the end because they're not believing for anything more. But so much more is available. So sometimes we don't realize that sometimes we are putting limitations on the divine power of God. We're putting limitations on God's blessings by setting limits. But how about we say infinite possibilities are mine, and I, that is my goal. I am the sky is the limit. I am claiming it all, and I'm not going to do be in any way withholding or putting up something that would repulse or push back or not attract that which I so desire in my life. Where do we get this kind of idea? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is confidence that what we believe for will actually happen, is what it's saying. It gives assurance about things we cannot see. You see, when we're doing this, we understand that our faith is that which is attracting to us. That demonstration of our word that we speak is going to attract to us that which we so desire. When you're speaking, I am love, what do you attract? Love. When you're speaking, I'm hate. What are you going to attract? Love? No, you won't. You'll repulse. That's that simple, wonderful explanation of this beautiful passage for us of spiritual law, promises, promises of God that are at work in our lives. You see, it's really not a struggle in our life, and there's no need for a wrestling match. Within our lives, all it takes is this wonderful sense of moving up higher. That's right. It's simply about moving up higher in our consciousness and our awareness of that divine presence here with us right now. Moving on up and taking our thoughts from this level up to a higher level. Now, where do we get this kind of idea? Oh, how about from the Bible? (laughs) How about we actually read it and look at the stories that are our stories, your story, my story, and we apply them to our lives How about the story of Moses when God spoke to him and called him, go up to the summit of Pisgah and gaze about to the west, to the north, to the south and east. He was telling Moses, go on up higher, higher, and gaze and look above all the obstacles of this world and see what your possibilities are. There's no wrestle. There's no struggle. There's no fight. There's no force. Just rise on up and see what's already awaiting you in possibilities. Now, it's not just that we hear this story once. But wait a minute, we hear the story again from Abraham. And Abraham stands in Bethel in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7. God tells Abraham to look at all four directions and to see the land God has promised him. And his offspring. look, rise up, go on up to this place. Look about, raise your gaze, lift your eyes up. All wonderful metaphors. What are they saying to us? It's time to start thinking from a higher level of consciousness, of the divine presence. Not from that negative level down here of this earth of lack and and all its challenges, but to rise up, take a hike up the mountain spiritually, just in a metaphorical sense of moving out. Raise your gaze to a higher level to see this 
Because what we see illustrated for Moses, what we see for Abraham, and what we see in the teachings of Jesus are inviting us to see it all. See it all. Here's our problem. You can't see it all when you're thinking from down here, this level of negativity. I don't understand what's available for me. I don't get it. I need to wrestle with this. I need to struggle. I need to fight. Oh, but when we climb up and we rise above to a higher level, what happens is we have a panoramic view. We can see it all. You ever been to the top of Stone Mountain? You climbed up to the top? How many of you honestly climbed or you took the tram? Uh-huh, so you, most of you took the tram, right? But there's a hike to get up to the top, and when you can get up to the top of Stone Mountain, what happens? You see the east, the west, the north, the south. You see it all because you're at this higher elevation. And the higher elevation is this consciousness or this thinking, this awareness that says, I'm moving on up in this divine presence. And it's there I can see it all. I can rise up and I can claim the goodness of God, the blessings that are there, not in fear, not in question, but realizing that in the presence of God, all things will unfold for you effortlessly and with ease. Now, doesn't that sound like a great life? Effortlessly and with ease. It will happen for you when you give in. When you give up to the wrestle and the struggle, and let's throw that out the window. We're not here to force a single thing, but we're here to rest in this divine presence, for we know we've got a feeling. That's right. We're believing. We're knowing this, and we are receiving. Everything is all right, and it's coming to us effortlessly and with great ease. I don't have to work. I don't have to struggle. It doesn't mean that you don't treat and move your feet, as we say. You don't pray and move on out. I'm not saying that you're open to receive as God guides and leads you in the pathways of infinite blessings in your lives. When we understand this, Isaiah spoke about God who acts in behalf of the one who waits on him. Isaiah 64, 4. God works on your behalf. God's promises are at work on your behalf. Those laws of spiritual workings of God are working on your behalf. Everything is working on your behalf to bring about this infinite blessing. What a wonderful promise this is that every single day we realize that the greatest mediator of all is working on our behalf. So we rest. We receive. That's right. We open up our spirit. Lord, I receive. In consciousness, I receive. In awareness, I receive, I receive, I welcome this manifestation of the divine. I welcome the blessings of goodness. I receive them because I know that I know that I know all things are working together for my good and that God is working on my behalf. So the question today is, are you ready to end the wrestling match in your spiritual life? Are you going to give up the fight? Are you going to resign your shield as a prayer warrior and say, I'm not at war with anything. I'm going to give up my wrestling tights and say, I'm not going to be in a wrestling match in prayer anymore. I'm giving up the struggle. I'm just going to rest in the divine presence and know all is well. All is well. All is well. Amen.